The last group of planes I'm going to talk about are the combination planes, rehabbing combination planes. And the reality is, these are all metal planes, uh, all, all metal parts, so the likelihood of being able to fix any of these parts is low. Stanley made these planes for about 60 to 80 years, and over that period of time, they evolved from uh, a, a more simple style to a highly complex style. Uh, so not the, all the parts won't match planes from different eras. You'll need to be able to date your plane precisely, to a type and a year, and then look for parts that match that type and year. Um, there are online uh, vendors and there are tool collector organizations that might have parts like this. It's also true that Stanley um, used the same parts on other planes as well. So you may be able to find an older, decrepit plane that uh, parts can be salvaged from and use those to restore a user plane to full functionality. If you were trying to restore a plane to its original condition, you might not be able to do that. You want to use original parts. But as a user plane, you just want things to be functionally there. And you can often do that by uh, scrounging from other, other plane sources. Um, one thing that does need to be done here is the, the spurs on this plane here. And this plane here has a set of spurs right there. You can see, and here's another example on this plane, a set of spurs right here. And you notice that the spurs have three lobes, and a fourth lobe is missing. That's so that you can have the spurs either engaged or not engaged. And if they're engaged, you have three choices. So you can sharpen all three spurs and then um, use them over time and then come back and sharpen them again, or not use the spur at all. Let me just take out a spur here, and you can see more precisely what's going on here. So usually there are spurs on both <clears throat> skates of these planes, this side and on the other side. So you always want to make sure these spurs, and these spurs are in fact interchangeable. There are many Stanley planes that have spurs that look exactly like this. So here's the, um, here's the spur, and you can see, let me just put it this way, you can see that previous user has left one of the spurs blunt. It's not sharp all the way around, it's square across. Two of the spurs have been honed, so they're useful for cutting. We need to be able to grind this spur to match those so we can use all three over a period of time. And the reason why they made three spurs simply was to extend the life of these spurs uh, to the life of the tool or tool user, as, as that case may be. Um, so when I'm getting ready to work on spurs like this, my fingers are too fat to hold this and put this on a piece of stone or a grinder or anything like that. So I'll use either needle nose pliers or a pair of hemostats um, or uh, heavy tweezers, uh, some way to grab part of the spur and hold that so I can take it to a sandstone, uh, a grinding stone of one sort or another, or even a, a grinder, carefully working the curve of this bevel. And you can see these bevels have a curve on them, like so. Again, for that slicing cut. Uh, so when you hone it, you need to follow that curve so that the, the cutting edge comes all the way around the edge of the spur as much as possible. It's very small, it's very delicate, it's hard to get that precise, uh, but having a spur is better than no spur at all. This allows you to work cross grain, and so that's important. Uh, so these are honed on, as I said, just a variety of sharpening media, either power or by hand, uh, and uh, and the bottom line is you don't want to hone 
this flat side. You want that to be in the plane, same plane as the skate right here. In other words, you don't want the cutter, the knicker, the um, spur to be inside the uh, skate. You want it to be flush with the skate, flush with this iron here as well. So the outside face is never honed, only, only the inside edges. Other than that, the other cutters, and I've opened up this case so you can see the variety of cutters here. The other cutters, a lot of them are straight cutters, and we've covered this in detail for the other planes on how to hone and, and, and uh, grind, hone these stones here. But there are a number of cutters which have a um, more complex shape. These are a set of beads right here. Um, there's the sash cutter right there. They need to be honed with um, a uh, slip stone. And I've got a, a series of slip stones here. The bottom line is you're going to be looking for a slip stone. And these are, these are um, Japanese slip stones, so they're meant to be uh, used in water. And I store my slip stones in water, and I have a variety of them, uh, 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 200 grit, 1,000 grit, and, and uh, 4,000 grit. Uh, this here is a 1,000 grit honing stone, which is my most commonly used one. But you need to find a stone that matches the curve of the shape that you're working on. And you need to rest the, the stone on the flat of the bevel like that. Find that flat. And as you hone, you move the, the honing stone in a slicing, um, sliding arc like that. So you just don't work a... Uh, a groove into this iron, you work across the width of the bevel this way and that way. And again, you could also polish this face a little bit. If there's any corrosion, and these particular ones here have a little bit of rust on them, you could polish that off, get that smooth, then work on the bevel like that. It's exactly the same process you use for molding plane iron or any other shaped iron. Uh, just need to take a little bit of care that you don't actually change the shape here. Um, one advantage of these particular planes is there is no profile on the plane that the iron has to match, uh, unlike a molding plane. So uh, if you do change your profile a little bit, it's still going to work perfectly well. The most important thing, of course, is getting the iron sharp. This is Joshua Farnsworth. If you're interested in woodworking with a mix of hand tools and power tools, visit my website at woodandshop.com, where you can find a bunch of free woodworking lessons, workshop tours of amazing woodworkers and our very popular tool buying guides. You can ask questions and share your projects with thousands of woodworkers on my forums. Enjoy!